Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is my name is May Lynn. I'm the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. Welcome to the show. This is episode 438 of the podcast, which means logically that we did 437 episodes before this. Don't do the math or check on it. Everything's fine. Why would we lie? This, this is, is a podcast. Absolutely. Uh, great show this week. We're going to be talking about so much. Uh, Queen Elizabeth, Paddington Bear, Reggie Jackson, Kardashians, uh, New Zealand, Peter Jackson, and uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about a character named Duke Lawson. Duke Lawson, okay. He's the hard-nosed head of security that doesn't that... take crap from anyone. Really Who can't drive 55, that. yes. Yeah. Uh, he, this week's movie is Virus Shark. Uh, I've got a game that we're going to be playing. Yeah. Uh, two games actually. It, it it's gonna be a really fun show. Uh, we had someone come over just now. Uh, Kirsta or Quista, as she used to be, uh, as her name used to be pronounced by the Littles, and uh, our dog Mama is very protective and territorial, and so if someone just comes into the house. She will bark like an SOB, like absolutely freak out. And so we, uh, Quista just came over and we had to put the dog in the cage while Quista's here. And so every once in a while, the uh, mama dog will be in the cage just sort of shuffling around and it sounds like tap dancing. So just to let you know, I have a dog tap dancing in the background. And occasionally trying to sing. Yeah, we, I've got a Shirley Temple dog in the what? background. If anything, it adds to the how, experience. You're welcome. How do how do we actually know this? How what what kind of proof is there? How do we know that you did not kidnap a midget and are forcing them, forcing them to tap dance in your kitchen? Well, first off. The first thing that I would do is try and put that uh, uh, Terrible, little wish. person oh. on a kite yeah. and fly him around Central Park. That's the first thing I would do. It's a shap. It's a great one. You yes. should track it down, everybody who's listening. Party! Yes. The opening monologue is going to be a bit different. Usually I write some big thing or we'll discuss one big news story or a smattering of news stories uh, but this time around we're changing the format a bit i have a real random grab bag of bits and news stories and whatnot so uh, i'll be unpacking these nuggets of segments and we'll just uh, gab a bit about it is that cool with you bunford sure Are you ready? ready okay uh first off let's Pour one out for uh, our homegirl, our dead homegirl, Queen Lizzie. Queen Lizzie. The Lister. I was going to pour a 40 out onto the street, but she was a classy-ass broad, so instead, I poured out some tea. Yeah. Just a cup of tea with my pinky up. The original... The classy stuff. The original fucking lizard woman. Right here. Yeah. The Lizzo. Queen Elizabeth dead at the age of 147. She lived a very long life considering the fact that all British royalty is basically incest. Yes. Fun fact, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were actually third cousins. It's called royal intermarriage and it's incest. It's called royal intermarriage or uh, as Dr. Oz calls it, totally fine. Yeah. She has to get herself a Mother's Day card and a birthday card at the same time. It's really yeah. fucking confusing. Yeah. What has been real interesting regarding the Queen's death is it's it's been surprising <laughs> seeing so many people being positive about her death. 
Because sure, she's dead and it's sad, but also she ruled over a nation responsible for a lot of death and a lot of nations that England stole and also just Princess Diana in general. So it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that she finally died and now I'm seeing a large amount of conversations about uh, looking back at her life critically, you know? About her life and her legacy, that's been surprising. Because so many times, like, oh, Michael Jackson, nobody likes Michael Jackson anymore. Who likes Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson's a weirdo. He's a weirdo and he's a creep. And oh, wait, he's dead? Michael Jackson was a genius. I have always loved him. No one say anything bad about him from here on out. And I was yes. worried that would happen about the queen. But if anything, her death has just allowed people to actually talk about her uh, normally. You know, let me tell you what my favorite reaction was to the death of Queen Elizabeth. Reggie Jackson. Okay, Is yeah, the- okay. I am glad you brought this up because I know nothing about this. It's just something. Go. Uh. Number one, Reggie, uh, famous baseball player Reggie Jackson is still alive. You know you were a famous That was surprise number one, yes. Yeah, surprise number one. You know you were a famous baseball player when even I know who you are. Yes. You know, I don't know baseball. I know uh, Pete Rose. I know Johnny Bench. I know Jose Canseco. I know Don Mattingly. I know Reggie freaking jackson he had a candy bar yes he did called the reggie uh so he posted on twitter after queen elizabeth's death see i told you i didn't do it because he was brainwashed into killing queen elizabeth in the naked gun from the fire oh. police squad are you fucking kidding me that's why his name came up yes I, I, it, you don't remember Reggie Jackson at the end? I must kill the queen. I must kill the queen. If I show that to my kids, I bet they love it because that movie is so stupid. Oh, I bet that's like right up an eleven-year-old's alley. Well, it's in the it's in the airplane family. Yeah. What, the Zucker Brothers? Yep. Yep. The Zuckerverse is what they would call it now. The Zuckerverse. The Zuckerverse. Here's here's something that's fun. Okay, I got the... Get zucked into the Zuckerverse. Nice. Got the... Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's a weird bit of news. Hmm? Letting the Zucker Brothers know to call me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give give Bunny a call. Verbal copyright 2022, the Pope Uh Film Podcast. Uh, Weird bit of Queen Elizabeth is dead news. Basically, the the monarchy had to put out a message to the people that, uh, yes, we know that you're in mourning. It's it's a a national period of mourning. Like the entire nation is under mourning. Yes. Orders, I guess. Yes. I guess you've got to. Guess you got to boil your mourning. It's a mm-hmm. mourning order. So it, it the whatever the monarchy came out and said, yes, we know you're mourning. We know that you are sad. We're sad too. We have really lost uh, an important person. But we ask you to please stop leaving Paddington Bear dolls and marmalade sandwiches outside of the. Alice. Hey. It's, a padding, it's a Paddington Bear thing. People are leaving freaking sandwiches outside of Buckingham Palace. That can't be safe. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, can't like be- they don't have oh, I don't know four people yeah. <laughs> who might yeah, so- really enjoy a marmalade sandwich? No, you're going to leave it for a dead person. You're going to leave it for a corpse. At a fucking palace! At a palace, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 
the queen is dead. Donald Trump stole a bunch of um, <coughs> sensitive information. And that's the only bit of news that has happened over the last couple of weeks. Oh, except for one tiny little thing. Pakistan has been hit with so much rain and flooding that 1,500 plus people are dead and literally one third of the entire country is underwater. Yes. That is yes. incredibly fucked up. And we're not even really talking about this near apocalyptic event. And that's fucked up. Millions of people are without homes. It's been weeks. People are starving, dying. Climate change is is amping up so badly that that you know this tragedy. Six million plus people are displaced by flooding of biblical proportions, and this sort of thing will just keep happening. But we're not talking about it because oh my goodness, can you believe a one hundred and eighty nine year old woman died? Oh, what a shock! But you you know. <laughs> You know what ha what really did happen in Pakistan? No. No. This is all the white man tears because there's a black mermaid. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's a black mermaid. I've been recasting movies they left and right. They fucking cried so much. A third of Pakistan is underwater. Yeah. I, I'm just thinking of all of I've been trying to think of what movies do white people like that we can remake with minorities just to upset them. That's been a fun game that I've been playing. Well, it, it doesn't even have to be that a movie that they like, though. Uh, someone on uh, on my Instagram said uh, an all black weird science, and that would actually be really good. Yeah. Get it. We'll allow the theme song, the Oingo I, Boingo theme song. I got it. I got it. Okay. Uh -huh. I I think I got this. What? It'll it'll have to be completely recast. It will also have to be completely updated. But okay. A birth of a nation. Nice. Birth of a nation with an all black cast yeah uh, except for the black people except for the black people yeah who weren't cast with black people to begin with so it's still a step up yeah uh bunny let's play a game okay i have a game i have a game i was gonna save this for the end but we're gonna do it now i think I... this is a really I game. thought of I thought of a very simple game that I kind of wanted to bring up. Okay. For when you're gonna watch a movie, a few of you you're gonna hang out, you're gonna watch a movie, and it would be best if it's a blind watch. Yeah. For all of you. But going off of the title and the description of the movie. Write down, I would say, at least five things that would have to be in that movie. Ooh, that's good. So just from the title and the description. That would five work. things. So like so like, okay, now it's like this one. doesn't quite fit, but like the new Weird Al movie. You know? Yeah. It's a it's a mock biopic. Of a celebrity. Yeah. So, like, what are five things that are going to have to be in that movie? There's going to have to be something about substance abuse. Yeah. There's going to have to be, like, a bad breakup. There's going to have to be some sort of a tragic event. A car accident. Or a close friend dying. Something like that. And that's it, and then you just watch the movie, and whoever gets the most right wins. That would work really well with this week's movie, the film Virus Shark. It was directed by a man named named Mark Polonia, and he just he just cranks out films. Here are some titles 
we're going to we're going to talk about s- some of the crazier titles late in the second half of the podcast but uh let's see uh sister krampus okay camp murder return to splatter farm bride of the werewolf alien surveillance i mean with titles like that you can basically already write half of the film yes you know with just the title the amityville exorcism oh man 70 percent of that movie is already written with just the title alone yes jurassic <laughs> prey oh man that that whole movie just wrote itself so I think that with this guy's movie specifically, this one's called Forest Primeval. Oh, yeah, you can absolutely come up with like four or five things that happen in that movie. Yes. Absolutely. That would be fun. Okay, Bunny, we're going to play a I game. Was thinking, I was thinking of recommending this movie as a pity watch. You know, like, like yeah. it's not good. It's not so bad, it's good. It's just bad. You're going to have a bad time if you watch it. You know, but they tried. So give it a pity watch. But I don't know. I think I got to take that back now if the guy is just cranking out shit after shit. He is cranking out shit after shit. I love this movie. I am really going to defend this film. Yeah. Okay. In fact, we are going to have like a special tribute to actor Ken Van Sant, who who played hard nosed head of security Duke Lawson. Yes, in this week's film Virus Shark. Uh, so I'm really going to be coming <clears throat> to this is this is one of those films by one of those directors where if I found out I lived ne- near this guy, I'd be begging to be in a film. Yes. Okay. That's what that's one of those directors. If I found out that I lived in Pennsylvania, like near Mark Polonia, I'd be like, what movie are you making? I'll do it for free. Please just let me be in your bizarre film, you know? Yeah. So, okay. This is the game we're going to play. I'm going to name a Kardashian and Bunny, you right off the top of your head, you tell me about them. Okay. I okay. don't know if I have enough drugs in me yet, but let's let's give it a try. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So I I've got a I've got a bunch of names of different Kardashians. So so you just tell me about them, okay? Okay. You ready? All right. Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. Uh actually a secret agent in Masada. Uh, so she is a uh, Jewish secret service. Uh, nice. she has recently toppled the Jacqueline Smith collection at JC Penny. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Good. Kylie Kardashian. Kardashian? Kylie Jenner? Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner is a as a hobby not ex- she very much enjoys strip skydiving okay uh so as she is skydiving she is taking off her clothes to uh the sexual healing um until she finally reaches the ground uh that's all i know about her offhand I wonder if it would be possible. I imagine with the right amount of money, anything is possible, but I wonder if it would be possible to be the first person to do karaoke and skydiving at the same time. You jump with a speaker, some sort of a Bluetooth microphone. Yeah. Would that be possible? I'm pretty sure that would be possible. That would be but what possible. What if I have a microphone? Not... What if I have a microphone and there's like a cone, like a dog cone on it, 
and I'm like yelling into the microphone while I'm falling. I think it's the velocity at which you're falling. If you had something on your face like that, it has to be super secure, like an astronaut helmet or some shit, so that you can be able to be heard because the wind going by, doesn't matter where the microphone's at, you're not gonna be able to be heard. Yeah, but here's but here's the thing. Music, play the track over after. But then you say like, oh, but if you have an astronaut suit. So basically, we're both right in the sense that if you had Elon Musk money, you could make this happen. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. This could happen. Cat, I swear. Well, well but, but now we're getting in the, into the whole philosophical, like, if no one can hear you, are you really doing karaoke? Well, you would have or, to have someone at the... the same time as you filming you. Well, yeah, that's easily arranged, of course. Yeah. But... And then, like, another person drinking a beer. Wall falling. And your yeah. your song selection would really be important and it would have to be calculated against your rate of fall. Um, it's raining, men. Free falling? Free falling, yeah. You are not going to want to be singing Freebird for this one. No, <laughs> no. Okay? No. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you have the suit and you had the microphone inside of the helmet and a speaker, then that could be possible. Yeah, it is possible. Yeah, like you, you have like a suit on and maybe yeah, like one like of those like wireless, yeah, just, one of those wireless say. microphones inside of the suit. Like Madonna. Yeah, while you're falling. Yeah, just it is It is possible. Bitch. Yeah, you could Tony Stark this bitch. Tony Stark this bitch. <laughs> you don't even need a microphone. You just yeah. talk to your suit. Yeah, <laughs> you got this. Okay, uh, Rob Kardashian. Rob Kardashian. <laughs> Is uh, a a lion tamer with okay. he is a lion tamer at a very small Bangladesh petting zoo. I did hear that about him. Yes, yes, I read that in an Us magazine. Uh, and even you... though the lions that he is taming are very very small. Mm. He's still not very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob Kardashian, not really good at much. Jim Boy Kardashian. Jim Boy Kardashian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Rob Kardashian, not really good at much. Jim Boy, sorry, I had a technical moment that. there. It's okay. Uh Jim Boy Kardashian. Yes. Jim Boy Kardashian collects exotic, collects and races exotic snails. Yeah, a lot of people know that. He's got a big they, following amongst the snail racing community. They will often be hand painted and trained for speed. And can race up to three inches a minute. See, the thing is, is that I have kids, young ones and older ones. And so I have been forced to see the DreamWorks mo movie Turbo a number older of times. And, and so I'm not sure if you realize that you're basically describing the plot of the DreamWorks movie Turbo, but that's a wonderful film. <laughs> really is good, and I like it. You haven't really lived until you've heard Samuel Jackson as a snail. Yeah. So, just FYI. If snails... Uh, pay bills, yeah. Love that movie. Okay. Snake Kardashian. Snake Kardashian. Yeah. Okay. Snake Kardashian just doesn't actually exist. He was just made I, up. Okay. Okay. Hold on, Bunny. In the beginning, when I said we had a game, I'm going to name a Kardashian. I never said they were real. Right. So a lot of these are are what scientists call hypothetical Kardashians. Basically basically oh, 
if the name ends in Kardashian and does not start with some kind of a K, I have no idea who they are. All not of these close. start with a K, but so they're they, silent. So they could be real. They could not be real. Yeah. I am just saying, literally, Snake Kardashian, professionally, is not real. That's okay, what but... he does for a living. He does not exist. Professional, but, but he's the person that you call if you need something done. And he shows up and he's got like a jean jacket on and an eye patch. And he lights his cigar by like striking the match on his beard. Shh. Yeah. That's the, the, snake. the one thing that you say frequently to Snake Kardashian is, hey, Get away from the Mach 5. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Oh. Frankie two times Kardashian. Frankie two times Kardashian. Yeah. Frankie two times Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ivan Kardashian. Ivan Kardashian. Okay. Ivan Kardashian uh, has a thriving input export store yeah uh olive oil specializing in pogs pogs nice. from all over the world yeah but pogs all over the it's, world. but he is much more of a specialist in that all of the pogs okay all of the representations on the pogs are Alf. All of them. Nice. They are Alf. Alf. So so you can see the Sudanese version of Alf in the traditional Sudanese style of Pog. Fun fact in Japan, uh the name that they gave Alf tra roughly translates into American Big Nose Happy Alien Good Time. Oh. Which I think is a much better name than Alf. What about Sister Bridget Kardashian? Sister Bridget Kardashian is the first Scientologist nun. A nunentologist. Yes. I like that. A nunentologist. Yes. Instead of the habit, they make her dress up as a giant blueberry. <laughs> they make her dress up like various uh, Tom Cruise characters. Yes. So yes. it's like uh, it's like one sister dresses up like Minority Report. She has, unfortunately, and I hate to bring the bad news, she has unfortunately recently passed away when she tried to impersonate Tom Cruise impersonating Austin Powers and it caused her to explode. Ten minute warning. Ooh, okay. Uh Jose Jose Kardashian. Jose Kardashian uh is in the He hasn't done as well as the other Kardashians. He's running a fairly successful gap in the Plymouth Mall. Nice. You know, I mean, he's making a li Look, his family's fed. Okay, they're happy. They love him. He's got a dog. He didn't do as well as the other Kardashians. But, you know, he's trying. Fuck it, you know? I mean, he yeah. is the manager of the gap. Yeah. You know, he's coping soon. Maybe he'll be able to transition to Banana Republic. Yeah, give him you a know. chance. Yeah. Osama bin Kardashian. Osama bin Kardashian. Um, he is the sitar player for the Beatles cover band we are well over 65. Nice. 
Yeah. I like that. Uh, Chloe. Chloe. Possibly a real Kardashian, depending on the spelling. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chloe is professionally an annoying twat. Nice. Nice. Uh, so if you she has cards, you could visit her her website. In fact, you could even use the Pope on Film promo code P O P O P E. Okay, for ten percent off, you would be able to hire Chloe Kardashian, and she will come by wherever you are, whatever social function it is, and just be a twat. That's a burgeoning field. I and I, and I, I think I it's the that. next step up from Instagram influencer, TikTok yeah. influencer. Yeah. Uh, it's just a m- professional twat. This next bit might be vaguely offensive, but I am a trans woman, so I can get away with this. It's got to be really difficult being trans and being from New York City. You okay. know, because because like you're walking around, hey, I'm transitioning here. True, true. Hey, Paulie, I'm going to get me that surgery, remove my gabagoo. Yeah. I may have written that one while I was high. Hey, I want to talk about the movie Pearl for a second before we get cut off. I haven't heard of this. What is this? It came out this weekend. I'm going to see it tomorrow, and I'm super excited. Okay. Because, what, in February or March? I think it was March. They released the horror movie X. Yes. And I really dug it. It was basically someone said, hey, what if we do the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but the young people who get murdered are making a porn? And it, like, it's a really simple, not original idea. But that doesn't mean it's a bad movie because the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was fucking awesome. And so this is a really good movie. And I really dug it and I really liked it. Well, it's so anyway. It's also one of those movies, like, why did it take this fucking long Yes, for anyone to think about it? Exactly. So, uh, Pearl just came out into theaters. I got tickets to go see it tomorrow. I'm super excited. It's a prequel to a movie that came out six months ago. And they're already working on the third. This is basically A24's high class slasher movie franchise. Okay, it is an A24? Yeah, it's an A24. So, so yeah, it came out this weekend and I'm super excited to go see it. A, a prequel to a movie that just came out. Yeah. And I I'm I'm just really happy that this movie is already coming out, you know? It's like it's like when it's like when you saw Back to the Future 2 and it ended with a preview for Back to the Future 3. Yes. Yes. You have 4 minutes and 35 seconds. I was in the hallway. I was folding laundry and putting yes. it to the cabinet. Here. You turned into John Mulaney. I turned into John Mulaney when you were talking to Bunny. Well, I'm okay saying this. I am I I am a bit high right. So, uh, but you did turn into John Mulaney anyway. You're how dare thing. you? How yeah. dare you? I, I have, I have been, I have been, uh, oh, I'm also a bit higher. Right you're now. also a bit higher right now. Okay. Awesome. There you go. Boom. Uh, so yeah. And then, of course, the biggest news that happened, bigger even than Queen Elizabeth dying. They're going to, they're working on a second Nicole Kidman AMC commercial. What? Huge news. What's this? Nicole Kidman, she does a commercial for AMC theaters that plays before every AMC movie that you go see. 
this is this is more of a big deal for me because I see one to three <clears throat> movies a week at yes. AMC theaters. But uh, you know, it's like Nicole Kidman says: we come to this place for magic. We come to AMC theaters to laugh, to cry, to care because we need that. All of us. That indescribable feeling we get when the lights begin to dim and we go somewhere. Eleanor, you drop the camera. That was adorable. Anyway, uh, I've got the entire script for okay. the Nicole Kidman commercial <clears throat> on my phone. Uh, somehow, heart, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. Yeah, so they're making a sequel. I'm really excited about that. This, this commercial is kind of a cult hit among people who go to AMC theaters a lot. You can buy... There is a shit ton of somehow heartbreak feels good in a place like this merchandise on Amazon. I want to get a shirt that says it so that when I go into the AMC theaters, all the employees know to avoid me. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that's about it for the monologue. I actually had a big chunk of this monologue where I was going to talk about AEW imploding. There's no time. There's no time. Nope. Because we're going to be taking a short break, just a very short break, because our free Zoom call is about to end. <laughs> there was a lot of time for explanation. <laughs> <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to be doing our history segment, Steve's historical approximations. And for all of you nerds, we will be talking about the Lord of the Rings. And Strange New World sucked, and Sandman, really big disappointment. I didn't see Sandman. Uh, it, what was... Oh, Stranger Things sucked? No, Strange New... Stranger Things itself was not that great either. <laughs> yeah. but what, so did what did you, you say, what was, what did you say what, about what Sandman? The, Strange New Worlds. No, 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 no. Oh, what did Strange you say New about World. Sandman, though? It was a big disappointment. Was it? I haven't watched it. I haven't watched the, it either. So, so we're going to talk about this after the break? Uh -huh. uh, maybe at the end of the podcast, but oh. it's a short break. To get back on Zoom so that we can continue the show. No, no, I know, but we're not. Are we going to talk about this now? Maybe at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know Buddy's opinion. That's all. I'll I'll pencil it in during our uh, tribute to actor Ken Van Sant, aka Duke Lawson. Okay. So okay. we'll That's pause our. Uh, yeah. So there you go. I told the director of uh, Virus Shark about this podcast. So hey, if you're watching. Mark Polonia, I'm a huge fan. I can't speak for Bonnie, but I'm a huge fan. So we're going to take a short break, and we will be right back with some education. Open your minds, people. Open your minds and your legs. No. <laughs> okay, just the minds. Open them. We will be right back with more easy listening here on KBB.